Destiny 2 update 4.1.5. Can you hear me now? We were just muted, so yeah. Okay. Activities. Raids and dungeons. Derelict Leviathan. Corrected power levels on minor combatants associated with the Shared Fears Triumph, which were set higher than intended. Duality. Adjusted the balance between armor and weapon rewards and set weapon drops to refer those that have not had their patterns unlocked. Adjusted the drop chance of deep side weapons within the Duality Dungeon. All right, so for those that are trying to get that fixed odds, look at there, right? Uh, fix an issue where players sometimes get trapped, gets trapped in the nightmare. And splash damage, grenades, solar explosion, rockets, etc. against bells no longer trigger a teleport. Dude, that is the most aggravating thing when you accidentally TP because of, uh, like for me, it was always like an explosion from like a geo or something like that. Fly in cinematic has been added when launch in, launching into duality. Grasp of Avarice, the final boss no longer teleports out of the spawn location at the start of the encounter. All right, so that is Raids and Dungeon. Moving on to Gameplay and Investments. Abilities. Fix an issue where Celestial Fire and Well of Radiance did not display the Scorch and Ignition keyword flyouts when hovering over the corresponding abilities. All right, so that's just a, 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 just a linguistic issue. Uh, fix an issue where super icons were not displaying next to the super description when hovering over your equipped subclass and the character screen. Fix an issue where radiance weapon damage boost was unintentionally stacking with tier one damage boost. For example, uh, for example, empowering rift, high energy fire against PB targets. Uh, somebody call court. He's about to have to um, uh, redo the entire stacking there. Yeah. Fix an issue where and we're at, freak that messes up our builds. Shite. Uh, fix an issue with solar grenades with molten overload equipped was not stunning overload champions. How many times has that been fixed, right? Uh, fix an issue where friendly vortex grenades can sometimes display a burning status effect displayed to friendly targets. Note, we are aware of an issue where vortex grenade is now dealing lower damage than intended versus PV targets and are planned to fix it for a later release. Wow. The vortex grenades are weaker right now. Okay. All right. Armor. Fix an issue where Calamon's hand's behavior was different between PvE and PvP. Ignition will now proc when defeating enemies by both direct hits and explosions for both PvE and PvP. This fix introduced a new issue that we are investigating where Calamon's hand will only apply Scorch to a single target. Okay. But the Ignition will still take place. The annoying thing here about Calamon's hand, if you threw your knife and the knife made direct contact, Sometimes it would just give you the knife kill and not actually the the scorch ignition kill, which is what you were looking for. So my question though, is this a nerf inside a PvP or a buff? Because it this, this is it Calaman will only apply scorch to a single target, but this is to be fixed. So it's a buff, and then once this gets fixed, are they saying they're going to fix it? This this fix introduced a new issue we are investigating where Calamon's hand will only apply scores to a single target. So a so a net buff, but when this gets fixed, then it will be a it will be a complete buff. And by the way, we just did a video on Calamon, and it, it has some pretty disgusting capabilities. Oh, it it continues. Hold on, hold on. It continues. Fix an issue where Calamon's hand wasn't working as intended with Radiant. And then knock them down. Aspect fixed an issue where solar fulmination was causing damage to the player inside the blast radius of the ignition. Fix an issue where the righteous cloak was missing its cape from the feminine model. Okay, this is just random. This introduced a new issue where we are investigating where the die markup of the cloak was reverted to default. So, all right. So, solar fulmination and radiant knock them down aspects. Okay. Guys, we're just going to test. Fix an issue where the top part of the Mark of the Falling Star ornament disappeared if a player's helmet was set to off. Fix an issue where the combat mod Heavy Handed did not proc with the Titan Stasis Melee. Fix an issue where the Omni Oculus Hunter Exotic was clipping through from this clock. Okay, so just some, some light changes there aesthetically. Um, all right, moving on to weapons, airborne effectiveness. Reduce airborne penalties for all primary weapons. Reduce airborne accuracy penalty at lower AE by 20% to 40% varies by primary weapon type reduce airborne auto aim bullet bending penalty these are the penalties have been reduced at mid and high airborne effectiveness by 20 percent so mid and high interesting all right reduce airborne magnetism reticle stickiness control the only penalty at mid and high airborne effectiveness by 40 percent some perks now give a static airborne effectiveness stat buff in addition to their other effects air assault plus 10 airborne effectiveness at all times in addition to the plus 60 
for a 70 airborne effectiveness total when at low health. Extended mag also gives you plus 10 airborne effectiveness. Steady rounds gives you gives you plus seven, which is interesting right there. Um, I just don't like the steady rounds. Like, hurt hurts your range. Was it minus five there in range? So, but maybe maybe that might offset it a little bit. All right, moving on to weapon archetypes. Hand cannons, precisions, 180 round per minute hand cannons, increased body shot damage from 37 to 40. Crit moves from 57 to 60, increased body shot damage, uh, 37 to 40. Okay, why do they got that listed twice? Can now kill in two crit two body against guardians, kills in 1.33 seconds in body shots. So it's extremely forgiving. The main thing about this is going from 60, right? So you've got, uh, you've got something like radiant, which is a 10% multi, uh, 10% add on. And so you're looking at 66 per crit. You're going to be able to kill guardians easily with just a single radiant buff and three crits. And I mean, when you, when you really look at that guys, I mean, we're talking 60, 180 times two. I mean, you're looking at a 0.67 TTK value. So, uh, anybody else get freaked out when they see a lot of sixes? Anyways, you'll be able to run around and three tap with your 180 with just radiance. That's, you don't have, you don't need kill clip. You don't need multi kill clip. And if you have a kill clip, multi kill clip weapon, um, you will, you can just, you can start with radiant first and then proceed to proc kill clip or multi kill clip and it's just three tap after three tap after three tap right so auto rifles increase body shot damage from 19 to 20 precision multiplier moves from 1.6 to 1.5 but it states that the crit damage remains the same at 30. auto rifles are just going to be more forgiving i it's not going to be meta man i mean i we're going to try we're going to try by the way it doesn't have it listed here this is supposed to be for 450 round per minute auto rifles. I don't know why it doesn't have the archetype listed, but that's supposed to be for 450s. Um, that's that's not for, yeah, all of them. Uh, scout rifles, precision, 180 round per minute scout rifles, increased body shot damage from 34 to 38. Crip also moves from 54 to 60. Guys, this is a ginormous buff here for scout rifles. It can also two crit, two body against guardians, 197 health uh, or lower, kills in 1.33 seconds. Again, similar to what we saw above. And, um, it's 1.67 against higher resilience. Again, similar situation right here. You've got six. You've got 60.8. You're gonna have even more forgiveness. Uh, that 10 percent multiplier. You're gonna actually be able to three tap with a one 180 round per minute scout rifle. You're gonna be able to three tap at max resilience. Should be max resilience. Rounding's weird inside of Destiny. Should be max resilience in that 0.67 time to kill value with radiant. And if you've got a 180 that's got kill clip. Or multi kill clip, dude. Once once you get that that ball rolling, it's it's fantastic. So dust off those 180s. All right. High impacts increase body damage from 38.2 to 42. Crit also moves from 66.9 to 73.5. Um, the main thing about this is you're gonna you, you won't have to get three crits with a 150. You can do it two crits, one body. Granted, it says 189 HP which I know most people rock higher resilience than this. The difference is when you have something, let's see, is dim up? No. I actually think Jade Rabbit is going to be positioned perfectly here because the way it's perk is chaining body shots to increase precision. So what you would do with Jade Rabbit is you would hit one body shot and then proceed to follow up with your crit shots. And your crit shots would be doing more damage. Um... And so, I can't remember the, the HP threshold we were talking about. But you're going to be able to kill higher resilience guardians um, with something like Jade Rabbit. That's not to say other 150s aren't going to be good. Was that Persis D I really like. Polaris is still really good. Those are still great. But Jade Rabbit is going to have that level of forgiveness. You almost want to play it like you did back in D1. D1, you would literally shoot someone in the chest. The recoil would pop the weapon up to the head. By that point, Zim moment has kicked in, and then it's two crits. So chest first, and then literally the recoil and Zim moment would bring it up to the head, and and you finish them off. I think Jade Rabbit is going to be a, a big time play. I think the thing that holds it back is, I don't. I think his airborne effectiveness is pretty shy. What's his? Oh, it's actually pretty good. Twenty nine. I, I tried jumping in the air the other day with it. It didn't feel good. But maybe that's just everything. Nothing feels good. 
Uh, shotgun, increased pellet shotgun PV damage bonus from 10% to 25%. Kev, why are, you, why are you throwing this in here? Oh. Oh, this is the new weapon. Oh, my God. Moving back over. Increased pellet shotgun PV damage bonus from 10% to 25%. Guys, fourth horseman at one time literally did the best damage. The best, the best damage in the game. Um, it is a fantastic DPS option if you stack the right things and, and do all, apply all the icky icky, it's going to be doing more damage. If you can keep yourself from getting stomped to oblivion, it's going to be good. Okay. Uh, linear fusion rifles change the previously added flinch increase to only apply to damage from, from other players. Glaze increased ammo per special brick from one to two inside of PVP. I don't know if y'all know or not, but like there are some seriously annoying glaive users inside of pvp and they're good they're actually good and there is a there is a play style for glaives in pvp now that it's getting more ammo too i think you're going to see an uptick in people using glaives in pvp so they're genuinely good guys uh exotics lawrence driver reduce aim assist staff from 32 to 22 I don't know. You have people saying this is going to make a big difference. Who knows? Reduce the suction against players. Remove the universal two times flinch nerf from the previous change. Again, the suction is when you actually land the crit shot or even ha have the exotic trait procced where it doesn't. Um, that, that suction effect, they can pull enemies in and even kill them. Uh, Gallahorn, primary rocket no longer has proximity detonation. Wolfpack rounds now deal half damage to players. So I did not know they were going to do this. So Wolfpack rounds now deal half damage to players. Now, primary rocket is the only one that's not going to have grenades and horseshoes. Even though it's not literally grenades and horseshoes, Gallahorn has pretty much grenades and horseshoes built in, right? Um, but the question that this has led us to ask, is this in fact a buff inside of PvP? Because what you're seeing inside of, or not PvP, PvE. What you're seeing inside of PvE is a rocket would not make actual impact with the target but instead would explode because of of the proximity detonation and then the wolf pack rounds would hit the target and this resulted in losing out on what would be a significant amount of damage due to that impact damage so this is supposed to be a buff inside a pvp a pve and a substantial buff so much of a buff again the primary rocket no longer has proximity detonation it's so much of it should be in theory so much of a buff that you want to shoot your first rocket in galley and reload and then shoot the second rocket you understand where i'm coming from you want to take advantage of that impact damage so a buff in pve a nerf inside of pve pvp i, I don't think anyone ever really like i look at gallahorn more as a as a pve weapon anyways the last word reduce hip fire precision aim angle by 50 percent reduce the damage and aim assist fall off distance by three meters so last word um control the users i feel like you guys are still going to be able to make it make it work um you can at least try i'm gonna enjoy watching you get shit on so <laughs> four runner increase ammo per special break from three to four in pvp and reduce ammo per special break from max to 16 pve i like four runner a lot it's one of my favorites ariana's vow increase ammo per special break from one to two in pvp service regime increase Airborne effectiveness from 23 to 31. Whisper the Worm, 9, 9 to 20. Monte Carlo, 21 to 29. Forerunner, 22 to 27. I'm assuming... So, the combination of these things being increased... Um, not that anybody's like breaking out Whisper the Worm inside of PvP. But th the combination of these things being increased is getting it closer to um, the, the mid and high airborne effectiveness. And this, of course, will would put you in that threshold... Of that reduction in penalty right and so with in in combination with certain exotics is is the idea there uh fixes fix an issue where many weapons with non-standard ammo types for their archetype were not receiving the correct damage multipliers this resulted in incorrect damage or or health rubber banning for some exotic or legendary perks on these weapons which include trace rifle special ammo grenade launchers ariana's vow fighting lion forerunner reshaping perks available for the tiers of Catrice's scout rifle have been updated reflected its intended selections this also correctly applies the Akaraz Rounds perk to any prior weapons that were reshaped to have ineligible perks. Slightly reduce the time to level a shaped weapon. Oh! Ow. Keyword, slightly though. Like how? Like how? How much? Slightly, I guess. Enhanced Incandescent now only applies plus five Scorch stacks 
fixed behavior around additional scorch stacks being applied incorrectly, varying based on combatant. All right. Okay. What was it before? Was it 10? Somebody got a confirmation on what it was 10. Okay. Fix an issue with the shaped instances of Callus, Minito, and Drain where the master of border wouldn't appear when the weapon had enhanced intrinsic and two enhanced traits. Yeah. Yeah, they got that good. Uh, the Heart Shadow Exotic Swords Catalyst Perk, Wraith Walk, no longer provides benefit while the weapon is out of ammunition. I don't feel like at any point where we like Heart Shadow is breaking the game. The Extrovert Origin trait now correctly activates Unglaive Melees. Fix an issue that caused Heart Shadow Exotic Swords Projectile Supply weaken on all hits instead of only hits made with the Shot in Dark active. Shot in the dark, shot in the dark active. Unfortunate. Fix an issue with the Galu RR3 sniper rifle claim that it used primary ammo. Fix an issue where Anarchy was dealing inconsistent damage. That can mean so many things. Like, what does that mean? Does that mean, uh... Anarchy was doing 400% more damage before? What? Guys, this is the kind of stuff I need to know about. Like, 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 get in my DMs. Quickly. I told you the glitch when it came out. Luke, but you didn't sell it to me, man. Luke, you were like, Anarch is doing some weird damage. I don't know what weird means. You didn't elaborate on weird. 400% more damage. That's, that's, that's nuts. Look in the mirror. <laughs> All right. There's an issue where the burst linear fusion rifles could fire faster than intended. Wow. Storm chaser nerf. Is that what I'm getting? Was it because you can reach, you could shoot it, and then as the fine, as the burst was coming out, you could already be shooting the next shot? Fix an issue where the chain of command could, could be made kinetic by switching between perks. Fix an issue where the Cryostasis 7070K wasn't working as intended with the Piercing Sidearm Artifact mod. Fix an issue where the where Python and Exit Strategy did not count towards the Dark Age Arsenal Triumph. Fix an issue where all the near fusion rivals and some exotics had unintentionally reduced damage versus champions. Interesting. Fix an issue. Fix an issue allowing Soros Regine to keep the spinning up trait between reloads. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. I wish I would have figured out how to do that, though. That would have been amazing. Um, General, the first gig emote would no longer have its infectious melody spread to other emotes. <laughs> Tracking a seasonal challenge before the season resets may result in a challenge that cannot be untracked in following seasons. Added images for earnable rewards to the Witch Queen dungeon key. All right. Excellent. Okay, guys. That is your patch notes. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.